Alright guys, so let's see whether I can explain this within 5 minutes. So guys, I'm going to explain about the cardiac cycle which involves the left side of the heart, specifically the left ventricle, left atrium, and also the iota. So basically there are 4 main phases of a cardiac cycle, ventricular filling, isovolumetric contraction, ventricular ejection, and isovolumetric relaxation. Like I say, cardiac cycle involve the left ventricles. So there are two main parameters that I'm going to explain here. The first one is uh, the pressure, which involve the intraatrial pressure, intraventricular pressure, and also intraiotic pressure, as well as the left ventricular volume in mil. So I divided uh, this graph into spaces. Uh, which uh, represents its own uh, cardiac phases the ventricular filling, the isovolumetric contraction, ejection and also isovolumetric relaxation and the filling again and then the space here represents the ventricular diastole followed by systole and followed by diastole remember this is the ventricular diastole and systole and the small area before the ventricular systole is actually the atrial systole all right so um i explain the left ventricular volume change first uh, the maximum i put here is 120 and the lowest it can go is uh, 50 so if you minus 120 minus 50 is uh, actually you get the stroke volume which is uh, 70 mils all right so during the ventricular filling uh, uh, there is a slow rise in the left ventricular volume uh, and then during the atrial systole, a lot, uh, much of the blood inside the left atrium is pushed into the left ventricle. So there is a peak high. Alright. And then during the isovolumetric contraction, as the name suggests, isovolumetric means the left ventricular volume is remains the same. Okay. And then during the ejection, most of the blood inside the left ventricle is pushed outside from the ventricle. So the volume will be reduced and this remains until the end of the isovolumetric relaxation and then during the ventricular filling it starts to rise again that's it about the left ventricular volume right, let's explain about the change in pressure uh, for the left atrium first so I mark here 10 mm mercury up until the 120 mm mercury. So for the left atrium, during the ventricular filling, there is a um, filling of blood inside the left atrium as well. So together, it, there is a slight rise in the uh, left atrium until during the atrial systole where the pressure rises. All right, And then uh, during the isovolumetric uh, contraction, there is a drop in uh, pressure but there is a slight notch here the notch here because of the closure of the uh, mitral valve so that's why there's a slight rest in the left atrial pressure even okay and then uh, during the ventricular ejection and so what happened in the left atrium is actually there is a feeling of blood because uh, after the atrial systole the atrial start to relax during this uh, atrial relaxation which is coincide with the ventricular ejection uh, the blood start filling the left atrium so the pressure slowly rises alright until the left mitral valve open where the pressure drop and during ventricular filling as the earlier suggests it's uh, coincide with the atrial filling the pressure slowly rises alright let's see what happened to the pressure change in the left ventricle so it follows the left uh, atrial pressure initially uh, but as you can see the left ventricular pressure is slightly lower than left atrial pressure uh, this is made possible uh, because the blood has to flow from the left atrium to the left ventricle so there must be a difference in pressure uh, means that the pressure in the left atrium must be slightly higher than the left ventricle so that the blood will flow from left atrium to left ventricle otherwise it will flow the other way around and then the during the atrial systole there's uh, because the blood is pushed into the left ventricle so the pressure rises slightly and then during the isovolumetric contraction 
the volume remained the same but the pressure inside the left ventricle markedly rise okay until the during the ejection the pressure is increased to maximum until 120 millimeter mercury and start to fall down uh, during the isovolumetric relaxation and then it follows the pressure of the uh, left atrium and let's see what happened to the uh, pressure inside the iota uh, the iota is as you can see the iota is outside the heart all right so the pressure actually reflects our blood pressure so uh, during diastole uh, the pressure should be around uh, diastolic blood pressure which is around 80 millimeter mercury and uh, it start uh, drop until the ventricle start to eject out the blood when the ventricle eject out the blood so this blood go into the iota and the pressure inside the iota rest markedly until it reach the systole blood pressure and then start to drop down until the ring I saw volumetric uh, relaxation and then there's a slight notch here this notch is because of uh, closure of the left uh, aortic valve all right so uh, during I saw volumetric uh, relaxation the blood uh, start to flow backward towards the heart during that time the aortic valve closed because of this closure there's a slight backflow in the aorta itself so this raise the pressure slightly so you can see notch here all right and then the pressure in the iota dropped slowly until it reached the diastole all right guys that's all about it thanks